human beings to create things that would divert the attention of human beings from their creator. <laughs> okay, let's look at this. You think God uh, inspired this to be invented? I don't think so. The other satellite things are good thing. No, human beings yes have creativity. God gave them creativity. But a lot of these things have been inspired from the pits of hell through human beings to bring them into the world. So that it can divert your attention and my attention from the things that matter. That's the point I'm making. And anybody who challenges it, please, I'm willing to have a debate. Let me repeat, human beings are creative by nature. Because God created them and they're creative. But not what all we call inventions and thoughts and philosophies have human origins. Some have been satanically inspired. Okay, when you watch a movie and they're bringing witches and wizards and demons that are from the peace of hell, making them as angels of light. And starting from the little things they showed children, even in their, in their, in their cartoons, they start pushing agenda. They start hypnotizing. They start influencing. You are telling me God gave that creativity. No, that's not true. Satan has helped to bring it to the point. That's most of the creativity we have today. That even believers have fallen for the shiny object. They have begun to believe in the world. The light emanating from the shiny object that is present which is this present world? The shiny object we are talking is the present world. Whatever, everything in it. It has blinded so many people. The blinding effect has led to spiritual stupor. That's why we cannot spend 10 minutes reading our Bibles. Our attention span has been so depreciated. Except on things that are not important. Except on watching things that are sinful. Except on entertainment that take away, but we cannot spend 10 minutes reading the word of God. Yet, centuries ago, human beings like you and I spent years inscribing, transcribing from parchments, putting them together, from tablets to parchments, from parchments to, to the, the, the printing press. People spend their lives trying to interpret the Bible for you and I, trying to translate them for you and I. And we cannot spend 10 minutes and we are children of God. It is because of the world, the blinding effect that the devil has put, that you and I are weak in faith. That's why many of us are so oblivious. I'm talking now to those who genuinely are believers. We're oblivious of the imminent collapse of the world system. So all these things we hold dear is about to collapse. From now to the end of the age, it's over. It's a cascading, it's moving. Very few know that this shiny object called the world is not forever. That it has a time stamp for its destruction. The moment Adam and Eve sinned, there was a time stamp for the destruction of the world. Which brings us to the question, are there no prophets left in the world? Because this teaching should be in every pulpit, everywhere, calling the children of God to repentance. Why? Are there no prophets left in the world? That's a question for you and I to answer. Scripture, please. I read from Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look at the audacity of Satan. He knew he was the son of God. And yet he wanted to tempt him with the world. Can you imagine? But he did. If he tempted Jesus, are you telling me he has not tempted everyone who genuinely said they were children of God? The Lord Jesus had enough for him. But the question is, how many of us or the millions who have known his name or called on his name have not fallen for mammon? I want to keep this scripture in mind as we explicate this item. If Satan tempted Jesus Christ with wealth and power, how many church leaders has he tempted and how many have fallen? 
Unbelievers have every right to ask the following questions. Unbelievers, those who have never believed. They have the right to ask us this question. Number one, how can you tell us that this world is fake? Number two, how can you tell us that there is a better world to come? Number three, how can you tell us that all these beautiful edifices and our high standard of living can never compare to Eden? which was just a garden. Number four, how can you tell us that this world will soon collapse when newer and newer technology show that the world can only get better and better and our standard of living will continue to do what? Increase. They are all good questions. Next question will be, if what you are saying is true, how come when we try even to go to churches, we don't hear these dire warnings from large Christian denominations? We don't hear such warnings from well-known television preachers, bishops, pastors, geos, etc. Those are very good questions. Especially this last one. I could say that I don't know, but that would be a lie. Since God's word warned that many who claim to be his were never his. And or left the faith that was delivered to them by the apostles. Or maybe they were shown that from that mountain they went to the world and they gave their lives to the devil and no longer to God. Scripture please. Second Peter chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. But there are also false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will cleverly teach destructive heresies and even deny the master who bought them. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction on themselves. Many will follow their evil teaching and shameful immorality. And because of these teachers, the way of truth will be slandered. In their greed, they will make up clever lies to get hold of your money. But God condemned them long ago and their destruction will not be delayed. For God did not spare even the angels who sinned. He threw them into hell in gloomy pits of darkness where they are being held until the day of judgment. Praise the Lord. I think that scripture answers what we are talking about. So we will make a little summarization there. Anyone who claims to be Christ's own and does not teach these things but puts emphasis on other things like how you should dress how you should speak <laughs> or uh, bring money and we pray for you uh, tithes they teach those things but they never teach about these things no that person is a false prophet is a false teacher is a false pastor Remember in the, what we said, there were also false prophets in Israel. Just as there be false prophets teachers among you. In our generation is worse. So many false prophets. In fact, I think there's so many is unbelievable. Satan took many of the false prophets who are deceiving their followers to the high mountains we just said to show them the kingdoms of this world and promise them wealth in exchange for their souls if they worship him. Many of your geos and pastors have worshipped have worship Satan. Anybody teaching worldly prosperity has worshipped an altar of Satan. Anybody that does not teach that except you repent, you go to hell. Who continues to use anything except the Bible is not from God because he is not teaching the truth. Whoever fails to teach, he says to the law and to the testimony, meaning to the word of God and to the testimony. If their word is not by there, I did not send them. That's why there are so few prophets in the world. Look at one bit. They will cleverly teach destructive heresies and even deny the master who bought them. What the Lord Jesus Christ he said, you cannot serve God and what? Mammon. But is it mammon what is being lifted up in churches today? With all their big building projects, all their jets they buy and people to fuel them, all the ragmatas they do, what do you think it is? They are denied the Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered for you and I and said, 
we should take up our cross and follow him. And the Bible says in this way, except they repent, they bring destruction on themselves. Because I didn't many people into Christ's eternity. We're going to shout from this pulpit to the, with our last breath. As Satan's agents, these are all Satan's agents. All of them, their job is to teach destructive heresies. They cannot teach you the way of the cross, the way of the Lord. They cannot teach you the way to eternal life. Because if they did that, their master will pull them out. That's why mammon, money, money, money is the currency in worldly prosperity movement in most of the denominations and churches everywhere. And sadly, Vasu said, many will follow their evil teaching. Many, 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 many have followed and continue and shameful immorality. And because of these teachers, the word of the truth is slandered. That is why there are very few prophets. Their voices are not being heard, but there are very few prophets. But they are there. Because many have fallen from the faith and have taken over the whole space. Many pastors and church leaders are leading their followers to eternal death. And their reason is stated again in this verse 3 is to get hold of their money. I didn't write the scripture. Then, how many years ago this was written? The reason for all these rag matters is to steal from you. Because it's in their greed. Verse 3. They will make up clever lies to get hold of your money. In their greed. Because they know greed sells. So they sell greed. And people will bring the money. God will bless them. How many have they prospered? How many... How many of you who have been going to all these churches all over the world have prospered because you put money? How many of you? But your pastors have prospered. The Bible says God has condemned them long ago because God is not pleased. You cannot mock God. And that's why we continue to call you out. And he said, for God did not spare even the angels. Who sinned? So why would God spare you leading his children to eternal death. He threw them into hell, in gloomy pits of darkness where they are being held until the day of judgment. I want you to know that, you false prosperity teacher, you wicked general vassier, who can you to lead millions into Christless eternity, wicked and evil. God always has witnesses. That's the next item. God always has witnesses. Next item. No, put on the board. Number four, good. You are a witness if you are hurting. When you wake up in the morning, you look at the world and you are hurting. Because you can see the darkness that has enveloped the world. You are not hurting for yourself, you are hurting as you see the total ignorance. You are seeing the total unbelief. You are seeing wickedness being spilled from pulpits and television sales by those who claim to be Christ. If it hurts you when you wake up in the morning, if it hurts you during the day, if it hurts you as you go to bed in the night, and you are crying to God, what, what do we do? You are a child of God. You are a witness. It's not you that put it in yourself. It's the Holy Spirit who has put this into you. Because you are seeing a darkness that has closed the eyes of so many, so they cannot see the light of Christ. A darkness that has made so many deaf that they have become so hard of hearing. A darkness that has made hearts to be so hardened that the hearts take delight in their deadness and they are being oblivious of the world's impending doom. If you have such a burden, a witness, scripture, please. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 5 to 9. And God did not spare the ancient world except for Noah and the seven others in his family. Noah warned the world of God's righteous judgment. So God protected Noah when he destroyed the world of ungodly people with a vast flood. Later, God condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and turned them into heaps of ashes. He made them an example of what will happen to ungodly people. But God also rescued Lot out of Sodom because he was a righteous man who was sick of the shameful immorality of the wicked people around him. Yes, Lot was a righteous man 
who was tormented in his soul by the wickedness he saw and heard day after day. So you see, the Lord knows how to rescue godly people from their trials, even while keeping the wicked under punishment until the day of final judgment. Praise the Lord for his word. We're not going to details, but I want to bring verse 8. Yes, Lot was a righteous man. Why? He was tormented in the soul by the wickedness all around him. By the sin of debauchery and sodomy he saw around him. By the sin of homosexuality that he saw around him. By all the evil he saw around him. Ditto Noah before then, the world that first one that was destroyed. So if you are hurting for the world, thank God for you. It means the Holy Spirit put it in you to hurt. Just like righteous Lot. Just like righteous Noah. But see, Noah was a lone voice in his generation. And Lot was a lone voice in Sodom and Gomorrah. 